Chris cooking. It's what we call cooking. It's nothing but putting a pot of water on a gasoline cell out in the vestibule of the tent. And that's a highly technical job that you know people pay. Did, did you have to go to Cordon Bleu School or something to learn how to do Institute that? Institute of America, as a matter of fact. Really? Yeah, in Napa. And they show you how to how to do all these things, how to set up that little tent there, and I mean, after all, how else are you gonna you're gonna have to go to school to figure out how to cook instant oatmeal? Right. Yeah. We're not having instant oatmeal again, are we? Well, if we don't get this thing done soon enough, that's gonna all we're not gonna have any other food left. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll go up tomorrow. We're going up tomorrow, right? Okay. Summit we'll tomorrow. tomorrow. All right. Yeah. Good. <laughs> good plan. And this is the uh, inside of the tent. Uh, let me turn around here. And uh, this is some of my clothing. Gunning down to the bottom. Oh, it looks like we spilled sugar powder on the floor here. Uh, oh no, wait a minute, that must be snow on the floor of the tent. This is the, this is the harness that I wear so that we can attach a rope to it. I can rope up to Chris so I can save his ass when we're walking along somewhere and he falls in a hole. These are my over boots, which I put over my regular boots like when it's really cold, like tomorrow going up to the pole. This here is the first thing down at the bottom is this pad that kind of keeps me from sleeping on the snow because this is just hard packed ice underneath, underneath the tent. Then there's that pad and then there's this inflatable pad which goes on that. And then I put my sleeping pad on top of that. Oh, nice and warm. This is the back entrance to the tent. And when you zip it down, you find, ooh, there's my backpack. Yeah, it's out there getting nice and warm for next time I need it. Yep, and up, up near the top of the tent, some things we need to get really warm, like my mitts, gloves, mask, face mask, stuff like that. Of course, we've got trash, food. This is a bag of apples. We have got water in little containers in these insulated things. That's a pea bottle. Bag of food. My bowl. Gotta have, gotta have a bowl. That's where I put my computer in, my little PDA. This is extra clothing that I'm not using so far. Yeah, not, not a lot of that left over. My mug. Still some stuff in there because, of course, there's no way to wash anything. Uh, this is my, like, first aid kit with all the stuff that I need in it and medicines and all the little things that you need every day. My satellite phone and hookup. GPS unit, PDA. Summit pack, which hopefully I'll put some things in to take up to the summit tomorrow. And uh, some more of the clothing around, just living on top of our clothing. And uh, anything to add there, Chris? No, you've done a smashing job. Isn't it, though? Yeah. I, I told people in the blog that in another day we're going to run out of stories to tell each other, though. I, I saw that. We'll have to start all over again. You know, That's if we just see each, over, each other over the head, then all the stories will be new. So, oh, is that what you do? Maybe the oxygen deprivation would just be like you'd forget the stories or something. You zip up all the flaps and run the stove. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. The too. Hey, you know, I got a question. How come my pack is in the vestibule that's like all covered with snow and yours in the nice dry one over here? Um, my pack is actually being used to hold the door down. Yeah, okay. I knew you'd have an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there's my boots over there. See, the boots stay outside because they're too covered with snow and stuff to come in here. Well, um, looks like that's about the end of it. Oh, if you look out the window, you can see just a little bit of what it's like outside, which is cold and uh, windy. Bye.